Good afternoon and welcome to the Next Generation Transportation webinar series. Uh, my name is Frank Petrella. I'm the program coordinator for the city program here at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, Canada. Today's webinar is Ljubljana, Making Space About People and Public Life. Our speaker is Tiasha Fisco and today's moderator is Darren Davis. The Next Generation Transportation webinar series is an ongoing series and we have three more webinars scheduled for July and August. You can learn more about these upcoming webinars at our website which is www.sfu.ca forward slash transportation. Of course we would like to thank our partners on this series. Our partners are the Canadian Institute of uh, Transportation Engineers, Moda City, Todrin Urban Works, Vélo Québec, the School of Community and Regional Planning at the University of British Columbia, Urban Systems, the Planning Institute of British Columbia, the Ontario Professional Planners Institute, the Licensed Professional Planners Association of Nova Scotia, the Atlantic Planners Institute, uh, the Transportation Research Group at McGill University, New Zealand Planning Institute, uh, the School of Regional Planning, uh, sorry, the School of Urban and Regional Planning at Queen's University, and Urban Studies uh, here at Simon Fraser University. And the series is organized uh, by the City Program at Simon Fraser University. Uh, if you have been enjoying our webinars, I uh, just want to encourage everyone uh, to check out some of Simon Fraser University's other programs. We have the Next Generation Transportation Certificate and uh, an Urban Design Certificate as well. The Next Generation Transportation Certificate is an online certificate designed for mid-career learners. Uh, such as urban planners, uh, transportation planners, engineers, and other mid-career learners. You can learn more about our um, Next Generation Transportation Certificate at an upcoming info session, which is on July 13th. And you can sign up for that info session at our website. We also have the Urban Design Certificate. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Urban Design Certificate, it's a certificate that SFU has been offering uh, for the past 15 years. It's not offered online. It is a face-to-face -face program. Uh, offered here at Simon Fraser University's downtown Vancouver campus. Uh, the program is offered in short intensive classes of two to three days long. So even if you don't live in Vancouver, it's still very possible to complete our program. And in fact, uh, most of our participants uh, in the Urban Design Certificate are from outside the Metro Vancouver area. You can learn more about our Urban Design program at our website as well, uh, www.sfu.ca forward slash urban dash design. So I will turn this over now to Darren Davis, um, our moderator today. Uh, Darren has over 25 years of experience in transportation. He was a public transport planner for Auckland Transport for many years, and he's currently the Transport and Land Use Integration Manager for Auckland Council. Uh, Darren is also one of the first graduates of the Next Generation Transportation Certificate, and he's now one of the program's head instructors. And I do want to thank him for joining us today, especially at the um, crazy hour of 3 a.m. in Australia. So over to you, Darren. Okay, well, thanks very much, um, Frank, for that, that introduction. And normally come to you from Auckland, New Zealand, um, where it would be 7 o'clock in the morning, not 3 o'clock in the morning in Perth, Western Australia, but um, such as the, the way the Earth's rotation works, um, depending on our various locations in this. And, you know, being part of the Next Generation Transportation Certificate, you know, you certainly become, become aware of that with students from all around the world and in various different time zones. So I'd like to... Um, uh, just say a, a very warm welcome, or as we would say in, in New Zealand, ki ora tato, um, you know, as a Maori greeting to Tiasa Fiko, uh, who is the Deputy Mayor of Ljubljana in Slovenia, um, City Councillor, and um, somebody that I heard for the first time at Walk 21 in Vienna uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, she rocked my world with her presentation about the the great stuff that Ljubljana is doing, and I uh, thought this would be a really great opportunity to, to get that to a, uh, to a wider audience uh, via this webinar. So, um, just a couple of things about, uh, about Shasa. Um, she led the candidacy and implementation of Ljubljana as European Green Capital in 2016. Um, 
you may have noticed you know, recently that the, uh, the 2016 Copenhagen Eyes Index has come out of like friendly cities of note that Ljubljana has jumped you know, five slots from number 13 to, to number eight. So that's, uh, you know, that's quite a significant achievement in uh, its own right. Um, just uh, has a bachelor's in communication science and master's in management, both from the University of Ljubljana. And really, yeah, without any further ado, I'd just like to hand over to Shasa to, to you know, tell us, you know, some of the great things that have been happening in Ljubljana, and I'm sure you'll be impressed. And uh, as Frank pointed out, uh, if you've got questions for Shasa, um, please, you know, put those in the question panel and the, the go to control panel and uh, we will have a Q&A session you know once Shasa is uh, through with her presentation so I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say Shasa. Thank you Darren. Hello everyone and first of all thank you really Darren for your kind words. Now I feel I'm under pressure you know under <laughs> such an introduction but I will try to do my best. Uh, so first of all um, I would like to thank you for the opportunity uh, to give this presentation. Uh, it's a really special experience to have this global audience you know in different time zones so in Ljubljana at the moment we are uh, we, we our clock is 9 p.m. and uh, really near my office there are people enjoying their summer evening uh, with a lot of parties so hopefully you won't hear anything and it won't interrupt us but um, I will try to do my best. Um, so uh, today or tonight uh, or I don't know wherever in, in whichever uh, time zone you are I will try to share with you an experience, my personal exper uh, experience in how we have changed the heartbeat of the city of Ljubljana in the last uh, decade. Uh, but uh, before I do that, I would just uh, like you uh, to say some uh, things about uh, our city of Ljubljana, some basic information. So the city of Ljubljana is the capital of uh, Slovenia. So uh, you can see on screen uh, a little chicken-shaped country. So it lies um, in the middle of Europe. We have four neighbor countries, uh, uh, Austria, Italy, Hungary and uh, Croatia. And uh, the population of the whole country is two million. So the population of the, our capital city uh, is 200 and 88,000 citizens approximately, so we are a small European capital, but uh, I normally say that we are small only uh, by those numbers, uh, because when we talk about being green, being sustainable, uh, being um, friendly and safe, we are really um, a big capital. Uh, I don't want to be falsely modest, so that's why uh, I can uh, say I'm really proud uh, of my city. Um, in the last decade, I've been here since uh, the year 2006, and in the last decade we have really um, do a lot in our city, and uh, if I jump now for the present, we've been awarded uh, with uh, different awards, different titles, uh, the highest being the European Green Capital Award. Uh, we've been really proud holder uh, of the title last year. Uh, and uh, the jury decided that we should um, have and won this title because we are the city uh, that did, um, you know, the the biggest changes in the shortest period of time in this direction of uh, sustainable development. And they also say that we are a city uh, where we manage to balance uh, very well two things. We know how to preserve good um, advantages, natural advantages that we are having, uh, green areas for example, really rich biodiversity, uh, clean high quality potable water on the uh, one side and on the other side we know how to change things uh, that are not sustainable and uh, one of the biggest challenge that we have met in the past was the field of mobility. And another award uh, or title that I would just like to highlight at this moment is um, uh, the award that we got um, in 2015 when we've been declare, declared uh, a touristic destination of tomorrow because the jury decided that we are a city with a green soul so that also meant um, a lot to us. But if I start now with this 
uh, big challenge that we have met in the past, and that is the challenge of mobility. I would like to um, start with the, the, the biggest change, I think, that really changed the heartbeat of the whole city, uh, and that was the change when we decided to close the city center for motorized vehicles, for private vehicles, and also for public motorized vehicles. So we close it for that, and we open it to pedestrians and to cyclists. We didn't do that only uh, in one street, but we have gradually closed more than 10 hectares uh, of uh, surface. And when we closed it, we first of all completely refurbish it. So, so that means from sewage uh, system to water supply system, district heating system, lightning, pavement. So we made it accessible uh, uh, to the people with disabilities, elderly, uh, mothers with strollers. Uh, we even filled the spaces between the cup stones so it's um, easier for women with, uh, with heels. Uh, so we completely, completely refurbished um, the city center. It was uh, a big change at a time, a uh, difficult decision at a time, but today when uh, we made a survey, uh, more than 90% of the people decided that it was uh, the best decision and that they want to keep uh, uh, this so-called uh, city's living room closed uh, to the traffic. It's only It opens only in the morning uh, for delivery hours, but uh, otherwise it uh, it's closed. I would like to uh, share some photos uh, about those changes where you can see how it was before and how it is uh, today. Before it was overparked, uh, today uh, we have a lot of space uh, for pedestrians, for cyclists. You can see um, on this street, it's called Wolfova Street, everything began there. It was the first street that we have closed. So before it was forbidden to walk and today it's forbidden for motorized vehicles. Um, here it was one of the main parkings, uh, it's a so-called Congress Square and uh, it was a big challenge for us because we built it an underground garage uh, for uh, the citizens that live in the center and on the surface uh, we have created an, a, a place for many different events from national celebrations uh, for receptions of the highest representatives of foreign countries, royal families, but at the same time it's a place where, where we will organize big cultural events on uh, the right photo you can see uh, that's the opening of our summer festival or a big sport events so it's a really um, a vivid place now uh, where people really like to meet and like to spend their their free time here it was a big challenge to build that garage because it's near to the river and because we have a lot of cultural heritage um, under the surface uh, from the ancient uh, ancient Roman times uh, so it was a special challenge, but uh, we've been successful. We, we won the international award Gubbio for not only preserving the cultural heritage, but also to presenting it in situ. So uh, at site, it presented the Roman whale and some other uh, things um, uh, from that heritage. Uh, here you can see some other photos of before and uh, today. Um, and what did happen? We knew that if we are closing, you know, 10 hectares for motorized vehicles, that we have to offer an alternative to the people because they have to move. We didn't want the city center to die because we've been listening that from the critics that the city center will die uh, that no one will be there because it will be you know too difficult to walk so we have tried to first of all shorten the distances um, we not only refurbished the riverbanks but we also built additional bridges so that people have shorter you know shortened distances uh, on their ways uh, um, as I said, we completely refurbished the riverbanks of the, our central river Ljubljanica that you can see here. And for that, we got the first um, award that was really important for us. It was Urban Public Space Award in Barcelona in 2012. There were 347 projects out of 36 countries and small Ljubljana from Slovenia won the first award. So at the time, it was really, really important for us for our international visibility and for building our uh, city brand. And when I'm talking about giving to the people uh, the alternatives, uh, there was another alternative that we made. We have um, 
introduced new electric uh, vehicles to the city center that people can use free of charge. They're having their chauffeurs. We have uh, some open vehicles. We have some glazed ones that are heated and we can use them also during the winter. And uh, people can freely ju just stop them and um, it's really popular in Ljubljana. Uh, not only as a tourist attraction, but also for all the citizens, for elderly people, for their visits uh, at the central uh, marketplace when they go uh, to buy their groceries. Uh, and I can say that also all the chauffeurs are real good ambassadors of our city. They know a lot of information about events uh, that are going on in Ljubljana, about attractions in Ljubljana, a lot of useful information. So I can say that um, these cavaliers uh, have become really part of, uh, of our identity now and our citizens um, uh, we made a survey and uh, there were more than 90% of the citizens that they think it's, an, it's a very positive project and also a very useful project for them uh, in the city. Um, okay Something is huh? okay. Now it's worth working. So another thing that we have um, done in the city center, we started in the city center, and then we've done that in the whole city. So we implemented the project uh, bicycle. So it's a bike sharing project because you know Ljubljana is small. It's con it's a compact city. It's green city. It's not hilly. It's flat. So it's perfect being a, a cyclist city. But before we started with all of those activities, I couldn't say that it was really a, a bike-friendly city. Um, we didn't have enough uh, bike infrastructure and uh, you couldn't see so, so much uh, cyclists around you. But when we started with uh, that project um, in 2011, I think, um, people really reacted very positively and they demanded more and more stations and today we're having uh, 51 stations with 510 bicycles. Uh, we are still increasing uh, the, the whole system so uh, till the end of this year we will uh, build additional seven stations and we are doing that together with the private partner, so it is a PPP project. Um, and uh, up till today we had more than 4 million journeys. Uh, the first hour of rent is free of charge and uh, you can imagine that 99% of all the journeys are free of charge and the average travel time is around 15 minutes uh, so that people really use it to come from point A uh, to B. Um, you can um, rent this bike with uh, another um, another project that we have implemented in in this decade, and that is uh, our Urbana Smart City Card. It's a contactless card uh, that's really convenient uh, for cashless um, paying this, uh, of city services. Uh, you can see it here on the uh, on the picture, uh, and you can use this card not only for renting a bike, but uh, you can use it on for public transport, so for our buses, uh, for parking on the parking spaces that are managed uh, by the city, including uh, the whole park and ride system. You can use it for a funicular to come to the the Ljubljana Castle for all tours and all the events that are happening uh, at Ljubljana Castle and also for the city libraries. Uh, it's, um, I think it's really convenient because you can borrow a book in one library, you can give it back in another, so you can uh, 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 you can take care not only of your time but be more sustainable if you're not driving around uh, searching the right library to give the book back. So there are a lot of possibility. We also have upgraded this uh, smart card with a mobile application. We actually got the first award um, in the London MasterCard. Um, um, I think it's transport ticketing award. It was called uh, because of it was the best the most successful mobile ticketing program category and now we have additionally upgraded it also for smart watches so if you have smart Samsung watch gear S2 or S3 then you can use all of the 
uh, things that you have on on the cart you can use it all so with your smart smart watch so you don't have to to, to have anything w with you when you're on your way on your way uh, so uh, in terms of uh, motivating people to um, cycle more we have approximately 230 kilometers of bike lanes and we've been really actively now renovating the whole infrastructure uh, we try to give more space to the cycle on the street for example when we have one-way streets then uh, if you are a cyclist you can go in both directions then we have uh, uh, this uh, so-called uh, uh, cycling um, spaces priority spaces at the crossroads when you start before the cars uh, so we did a lot uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure renovation in terms of additional bicycle stands that we are um, putting on different uh, uh, on all the spaces in in uh, Ljubljana uh, we are then having cycling counters on our main streets and we saw that uh, more and more cyclists uh, are coming to the city so uh, in 2015 we counted uh, on just on those three main roads that are coming to the city center more than 3.3 million cyclists uh, so it's uh, actually um, a big change and I could say that we have um, exceeded our expectations in really short uh, short time period uh, and not only we have experienced it like Darren said uh, before the jury of the Copenhagen Ice Index also thought that uh, Ljubljana is a city that should be rewarded. So in the year 2015 we made it uh, onto the list of top 20 bicycle friendly cities for the first time. Uh, we've been uh, we were ranked 13 uh, and uh, it was a really big accomplishment for us we because we saw the other cities you know coming from uh, cities like Copenhagen like Amsterdam that uh, cycling is really part of their city brand that they are really worldwide no worldwide known for for their cyclists and we only you know begun a decade ago with those activities so it meant a lot for us and and you can imagine our surprise in a way and also satisfaction when we saw this year's result uh, so the on the list of 2017 we are now number eight so it's uh, I don't know it's uh, in a way also big pressure for us uh, but uh, at the same time positive motivation that we really have to follow our vision and um, do even more on that field because we know that we have accomplished a lot but at the same time we know that we also have a lot of challenges in front of us uh, we don't uh, just rest on those awards but we try to, to be even better um, that's the field of um, cycling. Then I would just like to share with you some information or some things about our public transport in the city. We know that it's important that public transport it's safe, it's friendly, it should be fast, convenient and uh, the important thing is also of course the accuracy of arrivals which in Ljubljana is uh, 96 percent and we think it's a good uh, result that more than nine 5% of, of Ljubljana citizens have their nearest bus station less than 500 meters away. Um, price uh, for our uh, buses is relatively low so it's euro and uh, 20 cents for 90 minutes and you can change the bus uh, lines um, unlimited within this 90 minutes. Uh, so what we did in this last years we really tried to modernize it and to rejuvenate to rejuvenate our bus fleet so we have bought 138 new buses uh, and in last years uh, we really tried to buy just the sustainable buses uh, we've bought uh, 30 uh, CNG buses last year so altogether we're having 68 out of two 217 CNG buses and now in the future we will try to get some electric buses um, to uh, lower the emissions and also the noise uh, in the city which uh, I believe it's uh, really important. In last years we had 38 million journeys you know it is a city that is small with only 288,000 people so I think the result is really good and we try to motivate uh, people to additionally you know use um, 
buses, by introducing yellow lanes uh, for faster public transport, by offering free rides for uh, when people are going to mass sports and culture events uh, in our biggest uh, event place, Stožice uh, Stadium and Sport Hall. So if they have, uh, if we organized uh, an event there, it means that they can use uh, our public transport for, for free. Uh, and also something that's connected with our public transport are uh, our um, park and ride system parking spaces. Uh, so far we have built it five uh, at the entrances uh, in the city with a bit more than 2,100 parking spaces and we are combining those parking spaces uh, with bike sharing system, with car sharing system. Uh, we have uh, uh, charging stations for electric vehicles there so people have uh, a lot of alternatives when they come uh, at the suburbs because living in a small city as we are uh, uh, we are really having a lot of people commuters coming to the city every day because uh, in a small city like Ljubljana there are 130 thousand vehicles coming to the city every day. Being a capital city, uh, you know, being an uh, economic, financial, cultural, educational center means that a lot of people are coming to the city and we would just uh, like to keep them uh, at the suburbs uh, and that's why I think it's really cheap for them to, to park the car there for 24 hours, uh, to use a bus to come to the city center and to go back then it costs 1 euro 20 per day. So I think it's a, it's a, a good offer and you can see uh, also that because our park and rights, uh, uh, parking spaces are getting fuller you know every day. Uh, we plan to build additional three uh, spaces um, on three roads that are also uh, going into the center. So that is uh, planned for the future. Um, something that we have started in 2015, we have adopted uh, e-mobility strategy. Uh, so we really actively are expanding the network of uh, electric charging stations. Now, now we have more than 100. So we are encouraging drivers to use electric vehicles to contribute to cleaner air in the city and all electric uh, stations, uh, charging stations that are managed by the city or by our partners are for now free of charge. Um, Last year, when we were a European Green Capital, uh, we introduced a new project with a private partner, and that is a car sharing system, Avant to Go. Uh, it's a car sharing system with 100% uh, electric cars of four different brands from BMW to Renault to uh, Smart and also Nissan. Um, and the thing is that you can do the whole service only with mobile uh, applications. So you can reserve a car, you can unlock the vehicle, you can start the engine and then do also the final uh, payment uh, with uh, this application. Uh, and um, uh, this new form of, of sustainable mobility was very well accepted by our citizens and now it's being um, implemented also in other Slovenian and also Croatian cities as an innovative practice and we're really proud of that. So it means if you borrow a car, um, the idea is also uh, to reduce uh, the number of, uh, of owned cars. So it's better to, to rent a car. You have um, uh, also, you reduce your mobility cost in this way uh, and you're traveling without, without causing harmful emissions, without causing noise. Uh, uh, and they told me that with every uh, kil kilometer with electric cars, you save 100 grams of CO2 emissions. So we are trying to do something uh, good for the environment also. Um, in implementing e-mobility, we also decided to change our uh, touristic train that we had and it was a diesel train for an electric one uh, so we tested it in the year 2016 and uh, it went very well for a while but then later on there was a system error that we there was some problem with battery so at the moment we had to change it and we are now uh, preparing a public tender uh, for the new one why am I sharing that with you because I want to say that when you are implementing something new you know when there is a new development of new technologies and when you decide to go this way then 
you will normally meet some obstacles, you will do some mistakes, but, but uh, I think it's part of the way. You know, we are growing, we are learning, and I think that in the future we'll be uh, also uh, better uh, uh, on this field. Also, something that we did last year, we have introduced a new service for our citizens and also for our visitors, and that is called e-urban. Uh, e so it's a, a transport on call. We bought uh, 20 electric vehicles, electric uh, Volkswagen Golfs with the chauffeurs. And that means that um, you can use it or passengers can use it on the regular bus lines, but on those bus lines where buses are driving less frequently. So you can, you have the predetermined uh, timetable and um, the driver picks you up and then um, he takes you on that uh, bus line to your destination. The cost is the same as you would pay on the bus, and we are now testing it on five bus lanes where where the buses are are less frequent. Uh, and um, it's also a project that uh, has been accepted very well uh, by our citizens initially. Initially, now we will see what will happen in the future. We are trying to be a role model uh, in a way uh, that we are implementing sustainable, sustainable vehicles also in our city fleet. So in uh, uh, city administration, we have 44 CNG buses that uh, my colleague uh, use also. Uh, our city wardens use electric vehicles besides uh, of their bicycles. So we try to show to the people that uh, you can survive even if you you have to go to CNG station to fill your car or to a char e charging station to fill your electric car. So we are trying to motivate them to change their habits uh, in a more in a more sustainable way. Another project that I would like to uh, share with you. It's a project of refurbishment and changing the traffic regime of Slovenska Street, but uh, before we could start with that, we had to um, close our uh, inner, uh, our inner uh, city uh, circle, so city ring, and we did that with uh, building the Fabiani Bridge. Uh, it was a project that was in a drawer for 70 or 80 years uh, and was waiting <clears throat> that someone came and put it into realization. So uh, we did that in 2012. Uh, as you can see here, this red spot, this is uh, this uh, Fabiani bridge. Uh, it's a two-level bridge, so with cars on the upper level and uh, uh, down you can see uh, also cyclists, I see, yeah, cyclists and pedestrians. So when we closed this city in a ring with the Fabiani Bridge, then we had the possibility to do something also with our main um, traffic backbone in the city, and that is uh, this Slovenska Street that I was talking about, that before it was really noisy and polluted traffic corridor. It was the most important traffic road and uh, we had to do something about it. So for higher quality of living, uh, we implemented architectural, uh, traffic, environmental, economic, social uh, renovation. Uh, so we changed the traffic regime in a way, just a second, in a way uh, that we have limited transit for private motorized vehicles. We have created so-called shared space for public transport, for uh, cyclists and uh, for pedestrians, so they are equal in, uh, in this space. They move and they meet with active eye contact. Uh, as you can see, we completely refurbished the whole street, also uh, with new broader sidewalks, with uh, new pavings. Uh, with new furniture, we also uh, planted a new tree avenue with special tree trees, as I was told, with ginkgo trees that uh, in autumn turn uh, golden yellow, so it's really special to walk uh, in this street. And uh, we accomplished less noise, less harmful emissions. We measured the black carbon emissions and we they were reduced by 70% and at the same time which is interesting the con uh, the concentrations on uh, on other streets on surrounding streets have not increased we have reduced noise by by 6 decibels and by now all the the 
people that meet there, all the stakeholders uh, on Slovenska Street um, are really respectful to each other, so we have a good experience uh, with, um, with that project, even if was really difficult when we decided to do that, when people saw that they cannot reach their favorite shops with their private cars, that they have to change uh, their habits. So um, a lot of communication was uh, needed, a lot of, uh, you know, proactive informing, a lot of um, trust, I think, uh, people showed to the mayor, to the whole team, uh, because they, in a way, supported the project. Of course, there were some political opponents and uh, some people that were really afraid of the change, but we have made a survey afterwards and uh, it has shown that 82% uh, of the respondents think that it is a good project and that they are prepared to change their habits, you know, for the environment and for better quality of, of life here. And there is something that is maybe um, funny, it's really a um, nice story, it's, it's, it's maybe a small activity but uh, it was uh, very well received. Uh, due to this special and recognizable paving stones that you can see here on the, on the picture, it became very popular to make photos of your feet on the street and we called it a footy. So it's not a selfie as uh, maybe you, you know the word, of course you do, mm, it's called footy and the uh, citizens reacted, reacted very positive to it, so now everyone knows what a fit, footy means and uh, also everyone in Ljubljana knows where in Ljubljana the most popular footy uh, arise. So it's just a small example how you can, um, you know, help and motivate people with just doing a game, doing something that's attractive, doing something that people like to be part of, of the project. Uh, as I uh, said, in the beginning, uh, one of the most important advantages, natural advantages of Ljubljana is their green um, identity, the green nature, because almost three quarters of all the city surfaces are green areas and we really like to, to brag that every citizen in Ljubljana has 542 square meters of public green areas. Uh, but aside of that, we decided that we want to create even more green areas, so we have turned more than 90 hectares of brownfield areas of, of illegal, uh, uh, here you can see garden allotments or illegal waste uh, uh, dumps into high quality green areas for recreation, uh, for leisure time, for sports where, you know, people really came out of their houses, of their apartments and they now like to spend time together uh, in green surrounding of, of high quality and they walk more now because of all of that possibilities. So here I can, I just want to, to share with you some other examples of how it was before and how it is today. Uh, with uh, a lot of different, with children playgrounds, you know, a lot of paths for um, uh, walk without worrying that the car could hit you, so a lot of green surroundings. Here it was a really, really bad uh, waste dump near the river Sava and we have created six kilometers, 16 hectares of new green areas with animal farms. You can ride a horse, there are picnic spaces, you can jog there and uh, you know before there was no one uh, uh, using this area and today it's really filled uh, with people. And additional thing that we have motivated people to walk is we have built green corridors, we have connected city center with the suburbs, with green corridors, you can see people walking, we have uh, created some open air galleries uh, so that people are outside, that they walk, they cycle uh, and they're not using uh, so much their own cars to come from, from point A to, to point B. Um, there are, of course, another ways that you can travel around the city. You can reach our Ljubljana Castle by funicular that you can see here. Then in last years, it's really popular to travel, you know, on our river Ljubljanica uh, with the sub. So stand up paddling 
it's now getting more and more popular uh, or if you prefer boat of course there there is possibility to travel by boat and there are some other uh, ways that are becoming more and more popular like for example you can see it here touristic uh, tour with the seagways uh, around the city in really green surroundings that is the, the picture was taken in our biggest uh, park Tivoli that's really um, like three, three, 300 meters away from my office so it's really central it's uh, the forests are, are reaching uh, right into the city center so we have a lot of possibilities and we just want to use them um, another thing um, and activities that are important and that we motivate people to walk and to do something for for themselves and for the planet are our mass events it's uh, for example this is um, our walk around the path we have a 34 kilometer green ring that is surrounding the city uh, it's the ring where during the Second World War uh, there were barbed wire that was put there by occupational forces so Ljubljana was a kind of concentration camp uh, and today uh, we are having this green ring when people can remember the history and at the same time can think about a future enjoy in the nature and enjoy in you know spending time together so uh, on our holiday, uh, city holiday day of Ljubljana my 9th uh, there normally are around 40 to 50,000 people, depends on the weather, that walk around this part of Ljubljana. Then we have cycling marathon with uh, 8 to, to 10,000 attendees. We have a Lu a Ljubljana marathon with more than 30,000 people. So we saw that if you give the possibility to the people that they move, that they walk, that they cycle, they react really positively. You, you just have to give them the alternative and motivate them. And just a small example of how we spent uh, time in Ljubljana, you can see a picture of so-called project uh, library under the treetops. So we have different spots around the city uh, when you can borrow a book outside in the nature, enjoy by yourself or with your friends, you know, quality free time, read a book, then give it back. Uh, it's really popular and now this project is being implemented also uh, to other uh, Slovenian city. Uh, they come to Ljubljana and try to, to learn some good things um, from us. Um, maybe just a look into the future. Um, first of all these are the results if we compare the model split uh, 2003 and 2013 you can see the big change that has happened um, in the share of using the private motorized vehicles uh, a big change uh, in in the share of walking uh, not so big change in uh, terms of public transport but we have also seen what is happening the number of journeys with the public transport is at the moment not rising not increasing but numbers uh, of passenger is this is really um, interesting because I think that multimodality is happening here so people are using public transport but are using also you know just from one to other station and then they're not using public transport to, to continue their, their way but they use maybe bike maybe they use car share they have a lot of different possibilities or they walk along new green corridor to their final destination I have uh, just want to show you the results for the year uh, 2000 and uh, 15 when you can see the difference also um, in terms of uh, cycling uh, that I said that really increased our uh, expectations and um, uh, based on those results we have uh, adopted the integrated uh, mobility strategy, a new strategy uh, from today to uh, 2027 so for the next, next decade and this strategy is based on four pillars uh, so these pillars are, are uh, talk about how we will in the future increase the cycling, increase walking, increase public transport and at the same time how we will try to optimize the motorized uh, traffic uh, so um, before we had goals like that when we uh, talked how many uh, how big uh, share we want to have in terms of pedestrians for example and you can see that the share today is even bigger that we have planted it so we have done another thing we have combined 
cycling, walking and public transport uh, and uh, we want to have 67% um, share of all those three uh, sustainable mobility possibilities in comparison to, to smaller share in, with private motorized vehicles, so that's the, the goal for the future. I don't want to be too long because uh, hopefully you will ask some questions and we can debate about that. I would just like to conclude uh, what I think I have learned in the last decade in implementing those changes that first of all active communication is crucial of course. You have to have you know a dialogue with your citizens you have to listen to them to their ideas to their to their proposals but then when you, you reach uh, to a decision, then you have to stick to it, you know, you have to implement it, you have to have the courage to follow the vision even if in the first minute, you know, you don't get applause from everyone, even if some people oppose it, if you have the clear vision, a clear vision and you believe it's the right one, you have to follow it. So I think we've done a good job uh, with our mayor, uh, uh, you know, having the courage and we followed him, uh, for example, to close the city center for traffic, for, 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 for changing the traffic regime at Slovinska Street. Uh, so I think it's important to listen to, to your citizens, but then to follow the vision. Hopefully we will have this courage also in the future, uh, but um, that's... Uh, Thank you for, for listening, for this um, introduction, and um, I'm now ready for your questions, of course.